Hello everybody! It's me, your good friend Sparky, and we are reaching the end of an era. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has become one of the greatest things to ever happen to video games, featuring an amazing launch roster of iconic video game characters and close to three years of DLC support. But if everything stays true to Mr. Sakurai's word, the final DLC character is fast approaching. Before the end of the year, we will receive Challenger Pack 11, the last addition to an already stupendous character roster. But the question remains, who will this fighter be? It's hard to give an exact answer. Smash DLC, for the most part, has been wildly unpredictable. But I have a list of 12 or so potential combatants here, and I'm going to analyze their chances at becoming the final character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I did a video like this before when the ARMS DLC was announced at the beginning of Fighters Pass 2, in which I correctly predicted that Min Min was one of the most likely combatants. So this one is going to be pretty similar to that. The fighters here are going to be divided into three different categories. Very likely for inclusion, unlikely for inclusion, and somewhere in the middle, a maybe category. All of these characters are heavily featured in fighter wishlists and rumors, or in some cases it just makes sense to include them. In fact, I'd go as far to say that it's confusing why some of these choices aren't in the game yet. And for the sake of avoiding any unnecessary theories and extra speculation this time around, any character that is included in the game already as an assist character, a boss, or a DLC me costume is going to be excluded from this analysis. So that means no Dante, no Gino, and very unfortunately, no Waluigi. I'm sorry Waluigi. It hurts to admit it, but I just don't think it's going to happen this time around. Maybe better luck next time. So without further delay, let's get the analysis started. So starting us off, we're going to be getting a couple really obvious ones out of the way first. And the first one is a new Pokémon character. Specifically a new Pokémon character from the current generation of Pokémon, Generation 8, aka the Sword and Shield era. I'm honestly really surprised this hasn't happened yet. It's always a trend with new Smash Brothers games to include a Pokémon character from the newest generation of Pokémon. Uh, when Smash Ultimate launched, this was Generation 7, so they put Incineroar in the game. But now that the DLC is happening for Smash Bros, Generation 8 has come out, and there's still more Generation 8 Pokemon games coming out. And it just feels really weird that there is no Generation 8 Pokemon in Smash Bros yet. A couple of good examples of Pokemon that might fit nicely from the newer games into Smash Brothers are Toxtricity and Urshifu, and they would be fine inclusions, I'm sure. But with this last DLC, it presents an easy opportunity to add some promotion for the new Pokemon games coming out, the Generation 4 remakes in Pokemon Legends Arceus. The timing just seems right, and it seems like a really obvious choice that for some reason has not been capitalized on yet. So I really have to put the potential for a new Pokémon character into the very likely category. I don't know who it would be exactly, but especially for Pokémon Legends Arceus, uh, adding in some cross-promotion from that game before it comes out would be a really good idea on the developer's part. And it's not the first time that sort of thing would happen, either. Roy in Smash Bros. Melee was actually in Smash Bros. before he was in a Fire Emblem game. So just a little additional promotion that I'm sure they wouldn't be shy about doing again. And following this, the next list entry is another surprise non-inclusion, and that's a new Zelda character. Granted, in Smash Ultimate, a lot of the Zelda characters got, like, big revamps and stuff, but there hasn't been a new Zelda character in Smash Brothers since Smash Brothers Brawl. And that's a while ago at this point. I mean, it's gotta be, what, over 10 years at this point? The last Zelda character to get added into a Smash Brothers game was Toon Link. And that's just... It's been forever since then. It's the 35th anniversary of Zelda. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is still being actively updated. Uh, Skyward Sword HD just came out, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out next year. The timing is just absolutely right for a new Zelda character to come to the game. Who would this character be? That's a little hard to say. A lot of people like to point to Impa and her more ninja-like um, uh, iterations, 
like from Age of Calamity or Skyward Sword or Ocarina of Time. Um, I feel like they would have a hard time differentiating. Differ, dip, 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 dip. I feel like they would have a hard time differentiating that character from Sheik in that case, but it's still an option. Another good option is one of the champions from Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, even though it's a couple years old at this point, is still really popular. And like I said, it's getting a sequel next year. So that's still a very viable option to include one of the champion characters from that game. Overall, I put the inclusion of a new Zelda character in the likely category along with a new Pokemon character. It's just way too obvious not to happen. And speaking of obvious no-brainer additions, this suggestion comes from a friend of mine. Thank you, Rai. Um, it seems very strange that there is not another Sonic the Hedgehog character on the Smash Brothers roster. Adding Sonic to Smash Brothers was a huge, huge deal in Smash Brothers Brawl. And there's a, been a lot of Sonic content in Smash Brothers since then. There's two assist trophies, there's two stages, there's a whole bunch of music, there's some Mii Fighter costumes. But there's no second character for some reason. I mean, we've got two Street Fighter characters, we've got two Castlevania characters, we've got two Final Fantasy VII characters. It just feels really weird that we haven't gotten a second Sonic character to go with them yet. Now, a lot of the mainstay Sonic characters are already included in Smash Ultimate. Shadow's an assist trophy, Knuckles' an assist trophy, and a Mii Fighter costume. Tails is a Mii Fighter costume. But there are a couple really good inclusions that I think they could have put in here. That being Metal Sonic and his creator, Dr. Eggman. I'm recording this, right? Yes, I am recording this. Okay, I just had a mini heart attack. So it is just a really obvious choice to include them. Though, there are some points against there being another Sonic character, or more specifically another Sega character on the roster. Unless I'm forgetting something really obvious, none of the third-party uh, companies included in Smash Brothers have gone beyond three characters on the roster to represent them. Konami has Snake, Simon, and Richter. Square has Cloud, Sephiroth, and Hero. Uh, Capcom has Mega Man, uh, Ryu, and Ken. And Sega has Sonic, Bayonetta, and Joker. Bayonetta and Joker are kind of like on the outside of things where they're not as associated with Sega as Sonic is, but they are definitely technically Sega characters. So putting a fourth Sega character on the roster might be asking a bit much, honestly. So I think an additional Sonic character is going to have to go in the maybe category. Not as likely as the likes of a new Pokemon or a new Zelda character. Okay, we got those out of the way. Now we're getting into some really fun ones. First off, this character shows up all the time in Rumors, and that's Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot, while typically associated with Sony, hasn't really been Sony exclusive for a long time. And he's got a lot of games on the Nintendo Switch at this point. He is really popular. He is on a lot of wish lists. Like I said, he's always showing up in rumors. It would be a perfect fit for Smash Brothers. He would fit right in there with everyone else. But I have an argument against his inclusion, and that's because he has to be paired with Spyro the Dragon. Need I remind you, there's only one DLC character slot left. And if they include Crash in this game, it would feel, at least to me, like a very hollow inclusion if he is not paired with Spyro. These two go together. I don't think anyone would argue that when you think of Crash Bandicoot, you think of Spyro the Dragon. These two franchises have coexisted side by side for years, years at this point. They've interacted with each other, they both have similar origins. It just makes sense that they go together and they would be together in Super Smash Bros. But because there's only one DLC slot left, I have to put Crash's chances and by extension Spyro's chances together in the maybe category. It can still happen, but I don't think either of those characters will be in Smash Bros. without the other. 
Moving on to another character that's heavily featured in rumors, we have Sora from Kingdom Hearts. And in all honesty, he would be a perfect fit for Smash Bros. He has a lot of moveset variety, a lot of different physical skills and magic skills that would just make him fit perfectly into a Smash Brothers like setting. I could see him very easily fitting in alongside characters like Mario and Link and even Samus, Captain Falcon, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mega Man, all of these guys. He would just fit right in so perfectly. But the biggest hurdle for his inclusion is that Kingdom Hearts is technically a Disney property. It would probably take a lot of talking with Disney and all associated parties to get Sora in this game. And obviously they wouldn't be able to include any Disney characters or Disney locations or Disney songs in the game at all. So that doesn't totally eliminate Sora's chances for inclusion. There's still a lot you can draw on as far as uh, stages and uh, background characters you can include. There's a lot of original Kingdom Hearts characters that you can fit into Smash Brothers alongside Sora like that. But at the same time, you also have that sort of unspoken rule of three that's in play with the different DLC characters from third parties. Square Enix already has Cloud, Sephiroth, and Hero on the roster. We're putting Sora in there would bring that up to four. So with all that said and done, because of all the hurdles that have to get jumped through in order to get Sora into Smash Brothers, he is unfortunately having to go in the unlikely category. I don't think it's going to happen. I'd like it to happen. I still say he has better chances than some characters, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. I just, just, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. Moving on from that, we have another very frequently rumored character and a very unusual choice, Doom Guy, or the Doom Marine, or whatever you want to call him, the main character from the Doom franchise. Honestly, you would not expect a franchise like Doom to be represented in Smash Brothers at all, but that's what makes it the perfect character addition. It would be like including a Mortal Kombat character in Smash Brothers. We've already got franchises like Bayonetta, We've got franchises like Persona in there, Metal Gear, all of these oddball WTF kind of inclusions in Smash Brothers that years and years ago, if you said these characters would be in a Smash Brothers game, you would have been looked at like you were an insane person and you should be committed. You would never expect it to happen, but that's exactly why it would work perfectly. And it would be an amazing way to finish off the last Fighter's Pass and the last DLC inclusion in Smash Brothers. And Doom has made a comeback on Nintendo systems in a big way. There's a lot of Doom games on the Nintendo Switch now. So just because it would be such an off-the-wall unexpected inclusion, I almost 100% expect it to happen. So Doom Guy is going in the very likely category alongside uh, Zelda character and a Pokemon character. A really weird fit, but, you know, weirder things have happened. Next up, we've got a franchise that has a lot of representation in Smash Brothers already, but it surprisingly doesn't have a playable character yet, and that's the Monster Hunter franchise. Just having a generic Monster Hunter character on the roster to represent the games would be an almost perfect inclusion. There's a lot of potential there for an interesting playable character. And Monster Hunter already has two DLC me costumes in form of different armor forms from the franchise, and it's got a boss in the game as the form of Rathalos, but there's no playable character for some reason. I don't know why they decided to not include a playable character for Monster Hunter. It feels like it should have gone right alongside Rathalos as an assist trophy slash boss, much like Castlevania was included in Smash Ultimate and they also got Dracula as a boss character. There is that rule of three 
that keeps popping up, though. There are three Capcom characters on the roster already, so having another one on there would feel a little like over-representation of the company. And honestly, thinking of a way a Monster Hunter character would perform in Smash Brothers, it might be too similar in concept to a different character that's already been included in the DLC, Byleth. I actually remember there was a rumor floating around for a while that Byleth actually started conceptually as a Monster Hunter character, and then they had to move on from that idea and gradually turned it into a new Fire Emblem representative instead. Byleth moves kind of slowly, he's got a lot of different weapon options and a lot of power and oomph behind his attacks. He feels sort of like how a Monster Hunter character would be expected to perform. And because of that, Monster Hunter is going in the maybe category, right in the middle. I don't think it's terribly unlikely for it to happen, but there's also a lot of points against it happening as well. Next up is another character that I'm honestly shocked has not been included in Smash Brothers yet, and that's Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden. Again, this is a character that's been rumored as being included in Smash Brothers a lot. He's kinda in the same vein as Doom Guy, where he's from a more mature, violent series that you might not expect to be included in Smash Brothers, but again, that's exactly why it would be a perfect surprise entry. But at the same time, it wouldn't be all that surprising, because the Ninja Gaiden franchise has a lot of history on Nintendo systems. The original NES trilogy of Ninja Gaiden titles is as famous as games like Mega Man and Castlevania. They're the games that sort of made the NES for people. And it's really confusing why he's not on the character roster already alongside Simon Belmont and Mega Man. And it's easy to point out that a Ninja Gaiden character has two different eras of video games to work off of. The original NES trilogy and the more newer interpretation of Ninja Gaiden more closely associated with the Dead or Alive franchise. Like Ryu, if he's included in Smash Brothers, can have a set of four costumes based off a of classic Ryu, and a set of four costumes based off of regular, newer Ryu. It would just be a really perfect fit overall. So, much like Doom Guy, I've got to put Ryu Hayabusa in the very likely category. I don't understand why this hasn't happened yet, and this is the last chance for it to happen, so I hope it happens, honestly. Next up, we have another character that the air conditioner is going. The air conditioner has been going in the background of this this entire time, and I completely forgot about it. It's polluting my audio. Uh, <laughs> I'm not restarting, though. Oh, well. Moving on, we have another character that is frequently rumored, like, at least once a month. And it's another case where it's fairly surprising that he hasn't been brought in as a fighter yet, because he already has a lot of content in Smash Brothers, and that's Rayman. Starting in Smash 4, Rayman was included in that game as a collectible trophy, as well as Globox, I think, and I believe the pair and maybe even a couple other Rayman characters are spirits in Smash Ultimate. There isn't a lot of Rayman inclusion in Smash Ultimate right now, but the franchise's presence is still there, and it's a little weird why he hasn't been brought in as a playable character. He would be the first Ubisoft character on the roster, and he is a fan favorite. So, um, yeah, I don't know why they haven't decided to include him yet. That being said, something about the character, it doesn't fit as well to me. I don't know why. I can't really explain it or put it into words, but maybe that's why he hasn't been included as a fighter yet. I just, for some reason, have to solidly put Rayman in the maybe category. I don't know why, but that's the way I see it happening. I don't think he's as likely to be included. And next up, we have another oddball sort of character, and that's Phoenix Wright. Now, immediately you might question, what would a lawyer do in a fighting game? 
but Phoenix Wright has already been included in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so he's actually got something to work off of as far as the Smash Brothers inclusion goes. He shows up in wishlists and rumors with surprising frequency, and there is a lot of Ace Attorney um, content on the Switch at this point. Not to mention that Phoenix has a lot of different lawyer characters in his franchise that you could theoretically fit in as alternate costumes, and it could definitely work. But you also do have that problem of over-representing Capcom, much like with Monster Hunter. And admittedly, it might be a little hard to get him to function in a way that's believable to the character in a Smash Brothers setting. I mean, again, I know he was in Marvel vs. Capcom already, but for some reason, Smash Brothers feels different. I, It's hard to put into words for me. So as much as he would be a sort of what-the-heck kind of awesome out-of-nowhere character inclusion like Doom Guy or Cloud or Sephiroth or Joker, I don't really think it's gonna happen, unfortunately. So... Phoenix is going down in the very unlikely category. It still could happen, I'd be very amused if it did happen, but I don't see it being quite as going to happen, if that makes sense. And we are moving on to our last character on my little list for this analysis, and that would be probably the biggest character on this list, Master Chief. This would probably be the biggest way to finish off the Smash Brothers DLC. The character that is basically the Xbox's mascot. It would be so insane and everyone would freak out over it and it would be honestly pretty awesome. I'm not really a big Halo player, but even I can recognize that his inclusion would be a big, big deal. And it's not entirely unwarranted. Inclusions like Banjo-Kazooie and Steve and Cuphead as a Mii Fighter costume show off that Nintendo and Microsoft have a pretty good relationship right now. It is entirely in the realm of possibility that they would let Nintendo borrow Master Chief. But because he is the biggest name on the Xbox, that is honestly his biggest hurdle for inclusion. He is in a much different category than Banjo or Steve. Mostly because Banjo and Steve were not originally Microsoft characters. Steve is from Minecraft. Minecraft was an indie franchise. Banjo-Kazooie started on Nintendo systems and then was bought alongside Rare. Their inclusion, while it is a big deal, it feels more organic. It probably took a lot of doing it to get the rights to use them in Smash Ultimate, but it would take a lot more doing to get Master Chief on the roster. And so, as a result, his chances feel really, really low. Like, the lowest possible. Probably even lower than Sora. And so, unsurprisingly, Master Chief is going in the unlikely category. Sorry about that, but it's just the way the ball bounces. It's just how everything falls into place. And with that, my little analysis of the last challenger pack for Smash Ultimate is complete. Here are the results. I already forgot where I put most of the characters, but I'll remember when I'm editing this video. What do you think of my analysis? What do you think of these characters? What do you think are their chances at being included in Smash Brothers? And what are some other characters that you think should be on this list? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say on the subject. And with that, I think it's going to wrap it up for this video. Smash Brothers Ultimate has been an amazing ride. And all of the new characters and the waiting for the DLC, it's just been an experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. I'm really looking forward to the last Challenger pack. It might be one of these characters that I've talked about here, and it might not be. The point is, is that Smash Brothers is amazing, no matter who gets included in the character roster. While some of my favorite characters or some of your favorite characters might not make it into the game, we can at least take some kind of pride in knowing that somebody's favorite video game character 
is going to be added into Super Smash Bros. before the end of the year. And with all that said, it's time to finish this off. Thank you very much for watching. This is your good friend Sparky, signing off for now. I'll catch you later.